Good friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm Gina and in today's video we're going to be creating this little tree. It is 1 48th scale or 1 quarter inch scale and it is for my little duck cottage project but I am super happy with how this has turned out and I can't wait to share it with you. Just using some wire and some hot glue I've been able to get some really great texture into the trunk of the tree and into the roots and the branches. So without further ado let's get into it today. So for the base what I've done is I've actually mapped out where the house is going to go and then also where I want the lake to go because I want that to kind of sit as close to the house as possible so that when the little deck it comes out over the lake so it, it will give it a little bit more depth and definition so I'm really keen on that. So to begin with what I'm going to do is just take a sharp craft knife and start cutting away some of this XPS foam and I'm just going to try and shape it so I don't have any hard lines. I really want this shape of the base to be quite organic so that's why I've cut off the corners and then I'm just going to follow a similar process as what I've done before. You know, having a hot knife would be ideal but I don't have one so I'm going to use the tools that I've got available which is basically a craft knife. It's got a lovely long thin blade on it so I can get quite flat onto the bottom of the lake. The other thing that I want to do is actually create a set of stairs and I'm just going to do that out of the foam and then pop that back into place. For the decking I do want the beams to go down into the lake so I'm going to create those and attach those into the lake and glue them into place. I cover it with a mixture of water and PVA as well as some tile grout. So I've just got a whole bag of tile grout that I am just slowly working my way through. There's lots of different ways that you can do this covering. I've seen different crafters use plaster of Paris and paint and all of that sort of stuff. But this is just what I've got on hand and it definitely works. And then I'm just also going to cover it with a coat of matte Mod Podge and black paint just to really seal it up because I want to make sure that the, especially the bottom of the lake is really nicely sealed because I will be pouring resin into this at a later stage in an upcoming video. I don't know if it'll be the next one or it'll be the one after that so it'll be in an upcoming video for sure. Before I lay down any ground cover I do want to paint the base and just so that if there are any gaps in between it it's not black showing through it's actually brown and I've got a as you can see on my palette there I've got quite a mix of all sorts of different paints and I'm just using a really rough brush the bristles are all bent all over the place and I'm just using that and I'm just sort of dabbing it on and mixing the colors wet blending the colors actually on the surface so with a little bit of brown then I'll mix in a bit of green I think I've got a bit of yellow on there as well so I'm just sort of taking my time and just mixing those all the way through And then for the stonework what I'm going to do is just add in a bit of grey and sort of mix that in with a little bit of the brown that's left on the brush so I'm not too worried about cleaning the brush off completely because all of these colours will blend like quite nicely together. I'm going to put some stones over the top of this so I'm not too worried about it blending in completely. Mm -hmm. 
for the lake what I'm going to do I'm actually going to paint the lake green rather than blue with the resin what I'll probably end up by doing is I might end up mixing in a bit of blue into the resin we'll see how we go but what I'm trying to do here is just paint the lake as if there's some depth to it so the bottom of it will be black that's just to help add the illusion of depth when it's actually reasonably shallow So moving on to adding in some texture to the ground cover. So I'm going to start with some stone. I've got this sort of little bag of stones. They're probably a little bit big. I might go over it again with a, with a different weight, but it looks pretty cool. I'm quite happy with that. And then for the ground cover, I've just got some flocking of a couple of different shades. So I'm just going to mix those up as I dust those over the top of the project. These are some little reeds that I've got and I'm going to use them and place them into the actual lake itself just towards the bank just to add in a little bit more texture. I will be adding more greenery and shrubs and all of that to the base but these ones I just wanted to get in. I'm just adding in, I'm just gluing them in with a bit of UV resin. The reason why I wanted to get these in now is so that so when I pour the resin in I want to make sure that they're locked into place and then just to lock everything down I'm just covering it with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a bit of down watered PBA and then I'm just going to set that aside to dry. One of the things that I really wanted to create is a wind pump. Really keen to try and look at this project as whoever the inhabitants are uh, living completely off grid. And in order to do that, they need to have a water supply. I was thinking about putting water tanks onto the property, but the actual base itself doesn't lend itself to a lot of room. So I thought the next best thing would be a pump or a water pump into a well or a wind powered pump that was potentially going into a water source. So that's what I'm creating here. I found a file on Thingiverse and I have just been able to print that off on my 3D printer. I'm just gluing it together. For this very centerpiece, I've got a bit of brass rod that I'm just going to cut down to size so that I'm just going to glue that down to the very center to add as the mechanism for the actual turning of the windmill and that will generate the pumping action down below. It's fixed, it's stationary, it's not going to move and then this piece here has just got a little shelf on it. I am wanting to paint this sort of like a galvanized steel look so I'm just going to start with a bit of silver. I haven't gone back and aged it and that is something that I absolutely will do. definitely needs more aging and I'm debating whether to break off any of the blades on the fan but this is you know if it was if it was working and if it was in use then it would be maintained so I'm yeah I'm just sort of toying around with actually functionality to the story so I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. One thing it does do is it adds a little bit of height to the composition of the whole piece because one of the things that I am also wanting to do is create a tree. 
So for the tree, what I'm going to do is start off with some lengths of wire and I've just cut those off the end. I sort of looped them around. They're about 300 millimeters, 12 inches in length. What I'm wanting to do is create some branches as well as some a root system as well. So I'm just going to work my way through slowly twisting these together, separating them out and then twisting them together and slowly getting smaller and smaller until I get one wire per branch so that's what I'm trying to do and trying to build out a tree shape as best as I can and then I'm just going to sort of fiddle around with it um, and I'm really wanting the roots to sort of hang over the side of the project as well and one to sort of fall down into the lake so that's another reason why I haven't pulled the resin yet because I really want to actually finish this tree. I'm covering all the branches with a bit of hot glue and I've used this process before and I actually just left it at this stage so I kind of was toying what to do with this tree whether to do hot glue again or whether to do sort of a clay or polymer clay or air dry clay but I am going to take this one step further this time and because generally with the hot glue it tends to leave a little bit of a shiny surface so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my soldering iron or if you've got a like a wood burnishing tool that would also work and I'm just going to rough up the surface of the glue to give it a really bark like texture. This is smoking and I am absolutely got a ventilated room and wearing a mask which is really important especially with glue even though it's hot glue still glue. And so now I'm just going to paint it up. I'm just going to do a base coat of black so I can get into all of those nooks and crannies. And then I'm just going to gradually do some layers of dry brushing, sort of a heavier dry brush on this layer, and then working my way up to some lighter dry brushing, getting ever so slightly lighter with the paint and then using less and less paint on each of the dry brushing just to really highlight those really raised areas and leaving the black in those really recessed areas and then I'm just going over with this really light grey. I do think it looks a little bit too grey, a little bit too, a little bit chalky. What I'm going to do is put a, a wash over it as well, just to kind of blend all the colours together. And then there's one last step that I do before I'm actually happy with it, is to go do a an extremely light dry brush, and that's what it starts to look like. So there's some real texture into the trunk and the branches. For the foliage, I'm just using a bit of spray adhesive, and I've got all of this different flock. I'm starting off with the darker flock on the inside of the tree, and then I've got some two other colours of flocking as well that I'm going to use on the more outer edges because just to add in some different layers of color as as if the light has sort of kind of got to those outer leaves and then I've got a very fine flock as well that I'm just going to sprinkle over the top just for as some loose leaves as well just to give it some really good depth of color through the tree. So I'm really happy with how that has turned out and if you've liked this video as well consider hitting that like button it really does help and while you're there if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel come along on this journey with me and until next time everybody I will see you then. Bye for now.